What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jobbers and Goons. And in a very rare moment on my channel, we're getting a bit serious today. I went ahead and wrote a script, a documentary-style video, for my favorite character, Ben Grimm, or The Thing, from Marvel Comics. This is a character that, in my opinion, is one of the most beautifully written, has one of the greatest journeys we've ever seen, and is a character I hope by the end of the video, you've all grown to love. Real quick, before we get into this, make sure to like, subscribe. We just crossed 22,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for the love and support. You guys are amazing. And with that being said, I present to you, as Jobbers and Goons, an original documentary on my favorite ca uh, character, Ben Grimm, called Yancey Street Broke My Heart. I hope you guys enjoy. Without further ado, let's begin. Marvel Comics. Earth-616, a planet plagued by villains, devils, and more. At the heart of this plague is a place called New York City. And at the heart of this cursed hub, in the middle of the plague of chaos, rests the worst of the worst. The Lower East Side. The worst street to go on, on the East Side? Well, that would be Yancey Street. And this is where Benjamin Grimm was born and raised. Born to the late Daniel and Elsie Grimm, young Ben was immediately subjected to hate, violence, and unpredictability. His family's poverty had him spending nights hungry and alone. His father, Daniel, was an abusive alcoholic, taking his self-hatred and hate of the environment out on his family. Due to his father's inability to obtain or retain work, Ben's older brother, Daniel Jr., was forced to take to the streets to make money to feed the family. Daniel Jr. took up as a leader of the infamous Yancey Street Gang, using their criminal profits to feed his family. Ben looked up to his older brother, viewing him not as a criminal gang member, but a Robin Hood, doing what it took to save his loved ones. Fortunately, the gang life did produce profit, and it helped keep the family housed and fed. That is, up until the night of the knife fight. During a scuffle involving the Yancey rivals, the Thompson Avenue gang, Daniel Jr. was stabbed multiple times by a rival. The resulting attack left Daniel Jr. to bleed out in the streets. Another statistic in the seemingly endless New York gang scene. The loss broke Ben's heart, as Daniel Jr. was his hero and more of a father figure than his abusive dad ever was. Soon after his brother was killed, Ben took over the Yancey Street Gang, driven by both a need to feed his family in place of his brother as well as to get revenge on those who killed his hero. Eventually, the broken and angry teenage Ben would be taken in by his uncle Jacob. With more stability, Ben flourished both in the classroom and in athletics. He was an Ivy League level student and a football star, overcoming every single stereotype of the residents of Yancey Street. Until Ben, no other person had escaped Yancey Street. Making it out of hell was not considered real. That is, until young Ben showed a different way. Abandoning his gang life and former ways, Ben took to both high-level football and school, accepting a full ride to play at Empire State University, his hometown college and an elite school. Here, he boarded up with Reed Richards, a brilliant young man from an affluent background. Despite their cultural differences, both Reed and Ben soon became best friends, and Ben would serve to protect his genius pal from the dangers of the real world. While Ben shined on the gridiron, Reed proved he was a world-class mind in the classroom soon drawing the wrath 
of a jealous rival. This found Ben and Reed soon dealing with Victor Von Doom, a prideful, brilliant asshole from Latveria with royal ties and an eternal hatred for Reed, the first man to challenge his brilliance. Helping Reed stave off his rival, eventually a project was undertaken involving space travel. This brought along Johnny Storm, Susan Storm, and of course, Ben and Reed before a race to the cosmic storm. But what happened next, they did not expect. Cosmic rays blasted the four, changing all of them and giving them powers. Reed became elastic on a molecular level. Susan could now turn invisible and produce force fields. Johnny could now turn on fire and fly. And Ben, he was the thing. Well, not just a thing, but he was now a massive humanoid bound with cosmic rock-like properties as his bio makeup. He was now both powerful and hideous. Instantly, Ben hated himself and his condition. The four of them would soon become a superhero team, cosmic explorers by the name of the Fantastic Four. And what was Ben's code name or hero name? Well, he chose one based on his hate for his new self. It brought up his memories of all the horrible things both seen and done on Yancey. He always felt like a monster. Now he was one. The monster from Yancey Street. A terror from the east side. Poor side. He was the thing. Grappling with his heavy depression and the constant reminder of his inner demons via his new looks, Ben helped the Fantastic Four hold off early threats to Earth. As they waged war with Mole Man and battled the Skrull alien invasion, Ben proved early on it was obvious he was the anchor of the team. He provided not just the muscle, but the toughness and the street smarts. As a former gang leader, college football star, and then a decorated soldier and pilot. He held the team down and helped grapple powerhouses like Namor, all the while clinging to the hope that Reed could find a way to fix Ben. Soon, Victor Von Doom entered the fray, now revealing himself to be Dr. Doom, the ruler of La Verde, master of science and sorcery now being faced constantly with such insane threats. Even when given a cure, Ben found himself rejecting it. He had no family. Then the Fantastic Four became his. Despite their differences, he loved them and needed them, just like they needed him. He made the choice. He was the thing. The Fantastic Four would brave many cosmic quests in the name of both saving Earth or scientific research. They even encounter gods, with men fighting the likes of Galactus, willing to throw down with God for the sake of his friends. They encountered riders, with Ben even threatening them, calling them goons for making him look uglier than he was, and that if he saw them, he would beat their asses. But at around this time, one event soon became an iconic, recurring theme for Thing. You see, Johnny had read a comic about a green thing that was strong and ugly. It reminded him of Ben. The Hulk even acted like him. Ben spat at Johnny, telling him to never compare him to some comic book character. There was no comparison in the mind of Ben. Forget the Hulk. He was the thing. Ben and Hulk would clash, with both having early stalemates and legendary brawls. They were natural rivals, the Hulk being one of the few stronger than Ben, allowing Ben to fully engage his wits, skill, and competitive prowess. He loved to compete, and whether he admitted it or not, Ben loved to compete with a monster like the Hulk. In an early representation of how Ben felt as a hero, 
in his clashes with Hulk, a being who shatters dimensions on Tuesdays and punches Hell Lords on Fridays. Ben always felt like he was going to get the win. He was strong enough to fight anyone and anything, and he was tougher than anyone and anything. He was the thing. While embracing his life as a member of the Fantastic Four, the world was rapidly changing. Sorcerer Supremes were appearing. Avengers were appearing. Gods were starting to live on Earth. Namor was no longer the only mutant. Ben and his brothers and sisters of the Fantastic Four witnessed the birth of the Age of Heroes, a time filled with chaos, wonder, awe, and everything in between. Ben soon became an ally with many heroes, serving in missions with the Avengers, Spider-Man, and even characters like the enigmatic Doctor Strange. This wild new world and immense cosmos gave Ben a new purpose. In so many ways now, a cosmic rockhead like him was invaluable. He was not just strong, but he was a brilliant tough guy who had witnessed as much as anyone else. He was the thing. Given his insane new life, he still could not escape the reminders of his past, nor his tragic curse of always suffering loss, even after moments of brief wins. The Yancey Street Gang constantly reminded him of where he came from, harassing the former leader who ran from his roots. While they berated him and pranked him, behind all of that was a deep mutual love between Ben and the gang. He knew their pain, and no matter how far he ran from home, they knew his pain as well. He was the only kid to ever escape Yancey. And there was inspiration in that. Even if the rascals would never admit it, they would always only have one hero. He was really familiar to them. He understood them. And they understood him. He was Ben Grimm. In his cosmic adventures and battles, Ben found himself facing trials and losses. The role he played as the backbone of the Fantastic Four was taxing. He had to be tough all the time. There was no fight he could run from. And most importantly, there was no fight he would run from anyways. That wasn't how the kid from Yancey was built. Even the champion of the universe recognized the brilliance of Ben. In their match, champion had previously declared Thor and Hulk unworthy as actual warriors. But in his match with Ben, Ben refused to stop, even when beaten. He said he was a dumb rock, a stupid thing. But he was a thing that could save his friends, so Champion better kill him. The Champion conceded that Ben was the greatest Earth could possibly offer. He was a beautiful soul, one who would die before seeing his friends hurt. He would fight until the end and continue to fight after that. He wasn't just some dumb rock. He was not just some thing. He was Ben Grimm. Ben also found himself in love with a girl looking past his exterior. He found his Alicia. Hopelessly in love with her, Ben found himself constantly on guard with her. While most found his protectiveness of her often over the top, they failed to grasp the fear that gripped Ben every waking moment of his life. For all his power, he never saved his family. He could barely keep his friends alive. The inevitability of loss seemed to creep around every corner for Ben. He was simply scared to lose someone he loved. His purity and his love for Alicia, as well as his desire to keep everyone he loved safe, shows why every team embraces Ben. He wasn't just a tough hero that can really brawl. He was someone who could hold you down until there was nothing left. He was Ben Grimm. As the decades went on, Ben was subjected to some of the greatest stories Marvel had to offer. 
He helped find some of the greatest places in the multiverse and helped usher in the greatest era in Marvel Comics. He defied gods, battled devils, and even ran into riders themselves. He saw the end of all things, and he chose to fight instead of accepting it. He became a loving uncle to Reed and Susan's kids, showing them unconditional love and how they always had support in him. When Franklin was down to a cosmic being, Ben stood by his side, promising him he would always be there for him, and showing him that every now and then, slobbering time was all you needed. In his encounter with Stan Lee, on Stan's transcendental tour of his own works, Stan got lost on Yancey Street. Stan spoke on how scary and downtrodden it was. Then he saw the horrifying thing. Ben snatched him up and explained that Yancey was not a good place. Stan then would go on to offer to fix his narrative. He saw Ben's self-hate, his disgust with his own demons and background, as well as his dumb rock exterior. He understood and wanted to help one of his original creations. Ben simply smiled and said nothing was wrong. He was a hero. He was the kid from Yancey that made it. He was a member of the greatest team of pioneers, the original protectors of Earth. He wasn't just some ugly thing with trauma and sadness. He was a beacon of hope for the hopeless. He was Ben Grimm. And perhaps the best summary of how amazing he is. Ben once perished in the timeline besieged by Cosmic Ghost Rider. Ben was happy to die, being able to visit his lost family as well as everyone else he had lost. He could finally rest. However, the rest of the Fantastic Four could not accept that. In a heartbreak that transcended logic, the trio began to burn the heavens themselves in search of their friend. Ben, despite loving his eternal peace after such a long life, gave up heaven. He came back with them. He would rather suffer in his existence than see his best friends hurt. He was as special of a person as you could be. He is a kid from Yancey Street. He is a brilliant young man with dreams like everyone else. He is a reformed criminal. He is a brother, a husband, and an uncle. He is a hero and a symbol of hope for some of those that never make it out. He is the thing. He is Ben Grimm. Benjamin Grimm, son of Daniel and Elsie Grimm, brother to Daniel Jr. Raised in a place that no one goes to, and his scars show why. If you were to ask Ben what he thinks, I think he would describe his past like this. Yancey Street broke my heart, then showed me how to fix it. And that is the story of Ben Grimm.